Now, if we talk about uh, data manipulation, like it's just like okay, they give you some set of data, and then you are to make the data to behave in a particular way. Let's say, for instance, they give you a large information about maybe people living in a particular area, and then you are being asked maybe out of all those information or out of all those data to now extract maybe the people that are living in that area that have stayed not longer than two years there so it's now left for you to now look for a particular method given the kind of data you have on how to extract that from those set of data so that is just what uh, data manipulation is all about you tailor a data based on uh, a particular what you want it to do so here now if you are talking about data manipulation in javascript uh, there is there are some things that are important for instance array is important uh, you also have typed array then you have set then you have map then you have weak map so at least mo most of us are conversant with arrays and we might not be too conversant with sets unless maybe set in python which of course is almost the same thing what a set simply means is is a set of data that does not repeat itself for instance in a set you can have two the same elements at the same time let's say now in an array we can have maybe one two or three appearing like more than one times but in a set you can have a particular element appearing more than one times so that's the difference between array and set then your map like are you, are you people hearing me yeah okay so now for your map your map is like your object right but it's just that if, if we if we come to map you see the advantage of map like why map is uh, important more than even your object now like your object now can only allow you to have a string as a key right now let's check it out if you're having a let's say we want a map we say const map equal to new map right now we can now say map dot add uh let's say um okay i'm okay sorry let's go with objects first so that you see the the use of map because map is almost similar to object so if, let's say we have an object const let's say info right and then now we can't have an uh, uh, a a number as a key now look at what let me try something so that you see what i'm saying let's say gideon right then two let's say uh maybe python this one should be a comma now you can see that okay so let's see uh info dot one let me see something so are you seeing something do you see that we cannot use these keys to assess the property of our object info why because the keys given here are actually numbers but let's say for instance we now change this one to something like a string right name and then we'll change this one too to something like maybe uh let's say name two now by the time we do info dot name see what we happen you see we are able to assess the value of the key name so if you are dealing with object you can't you can only use a string right as a property name you can't use a string as uh, you can use a number you can use a boolean you can use a set you can use another object as a key so that is the disadvantage of using an object compared to using a map so for map a map can accept any value as the key it can accept a number it can accept uh, a string it can accept a boolean it can accept an object another object it can accept a an array and it can accept any form of data type as the key so that is the advantage of map over your your normal object then weak map if we come to that we'll talk about it so array we already know what array is this typed array will still come to it then set just like i said set only allow a particular element to appear 
one times for instance if we have this let's say const set and then we have new set now remember what i told you guys about the new keyword anytime you are creating an object right you always have to use the new keyword so now let's say set dot add i think it uses the keyword add i don't really know uh let's say uh okay one two three but let me be sure yes then let's add maybe another three then two then one right now if i now say set let's see what is is going to give us okay this one is a set of array so let me remove this uh, array bracket and see so now oh uh, okay no problem they want us to be adding one one element at a time so no problem so add one set dot add this time around we'll add two then set dot add three then let's say set dot add this time around let's now say we want to add two again now you know normally if it's an array right by the time we do set dot add one is we are going to have one as the first element set dot add two we we'll have two as the next element set dot add three we we'll have three as the next element and set dot add uh two we we'll have another two so the values we'll be expecting is going to be one two three and then another two but because we are dealing with sets set only collect unique data type so you can see that here when we are printing out sets here you can see it's telling us that we only have three elements which of course is true because we only have three unique elements here we have four elements here but only three of them are unique which is the one two three so since we already have two here this one will not be counted but check by the time we now change this two to zero now you find out that because we don't have zero anywhere zero will not appear here so we now have a set of four numbers now if we come back and add let's say set dot add we now decide to add another three here you find out that the three will not will not reflect here because it's a set it takes in unique uh, uh, uh element so that is uh, uh about sets that is that about set i did not touch array because i believe we are conversant with array at least for the past one week we have been working with array then map i think i just explained map now you know that i talked about for for set right and um, for object you can use a number or another data type as the property name it must be a string but the value can be any data type but for map you can use anything as the key so that is just uh, the difference so now let's look at what we have on our intranet so it says here so all these ones are actually settings which we don't need since we are using this environment here so we don't need the settings for now so now look at what they say is it create a function named get list student that returns an array of objects each object should have three attributes id number first name location the array contains the following students in order so now <clears throat> look at what they say we should create a function now this is the function so let's create the function of course we have function let me copy this one copy paste right now is the function collecting any parameter no i don't think so it's not mentioned here they now say that returns an array of objects so it means what we are expecting this function to return is an array of object so first of all we we'll open an array now array of what objects so how do we create an object of course we use our coily bracket now what did he say he said should return three objects so we have one we have another one which is two and then the last one which is three now what did they say each of them should return they say it should return this as name right look at it id number first name string and location string so for this one now we can say id now what did they say the id will be for this first one they say it's going to be one so we have one 
comma the next one what did they say first name and what should it be so the first name for this one they say is this gualome i was even the name then the last one <clears throat> they now say location location and what is it or, or what should it be it should also be a string which is what san francisco so and then we'll do this now okay let me reduce this a little bit now this is the first one if we like we can just copy this one so that to make everything easier and then we we'll just replace this with this and then replace this third one too with this so now what we are going to have here is this this one we have id of two and then the name they say is james james and then the location they say colombia so we'll change this one to colombia uh -huh. why this one is the id is the third one the first name we call it serena and then the place okay still san, san francisco so now by time we now call this uh, function because for we to get the return value of the function we need to call the function so to call the function we have the function name get list students and then this bracket so now if we check right you can see it is now returning an array because this is the opening of the array this is the closing of the array then inside of the array we have three objects this is the first one this is the second object and this is the third object so that is just what they want us to do in this uh in this particular uh, problem that's what they want us to do here so um good now in this second one like hope we are clear like everything hope everything is clear yeah yeah okay so in this next one if you look at what they say they say create a function get list student ids that returns an array of ids from a list of objects and if you look at the list now the list of the objects they actually imported it from this first uh this thing code that we have so it means that this function we have here we are going to maintain it this function we are going to maintain it here so you now say an id from a list of objects you say this function is taking one argument which is an array of objects so the, the this thing we are expecting now the argument we are expecting is this array of objects because this is the array of the object right and this array is the same format as get list student and here you see they even talked about it they say is of the same format and what is the format an array of objects okay now say if the argument is not an array the function is returning an empty array and look at the now say you must use the map function on the array so uh i think yesterday we looked at a little bit about uh map so map function is actually an array method now when you talk of function and method they are the same thing literally function and method function can be called for instance like this one if you want to call this one it's just our name of function get list student and then we have this one the return value of the function which is this but if you are talking of method you can't just call a method the way you call a function you have to call a method on an object so it's more like method is belonging to a particular object so that is just the difference between function and method so now map is an array method remember what are we expecting we are expecting an array of objects so that is why we can actually use map because there's an array involved if there's no array involved we can't use the map function because the map function is strictly meant for array so now let's let's look at what we have so they say we have this function we should create it so we are going to create it now we have function please anyway you don't understand you can stop me now if you look at what they say they say the function we call accept a parameter and that parameter now according to them is an array of objects so here i'll just use array 
as the function parameter and then what did they ask us to do they say if the argument is not an array the function is returning an empty array so let's start for uh, let's start with that one right if it's not an array how do we check if it's not an array now you use this one if is not array dot is array of what array now let me explain what is happening here if you remember right if we are checking for things like string number boolean right you know there's a way we do it what do we how do we go about that we'll say we can say maybe if right x is it is it so if type of you can say x, type of right yeah. so if type of x maybe we'll say is not equal to string so we always use type of to check whether something is a string a number or a boolean but when it comes to things like array things like map things like method mm, i say method sorry <laughs> things like object things like set you can't actually use type of now why can't we use type of for this kind of data type let me even ask the question so can anybody try why can't why can't we use type of for things like array map objects because it's like uh, should I say it's not a primitive data type or uh, beautiful beautiful something of sort beautiful exactly so we can actually use type of for array map object and set why because this kind this uh, data types are not primitive and that's why if you go and check uh, python all the data types of python there are eight in total you find out that array map set they are all under the data type called objects because by that you are trying to check their type of it will always return an object for you so and uh, we can try that so let's try let's say const map okay let's start from set right equal to new set now let's check type of set and see what it will give us these people want me to print it to hi now wow console dot log type of set uh, or is this nowadays to do the type of ah uh, what is happening i think it's because you've not closed um this, okay, this uh, one okay no yeah it's closed i just so uh -huh. i think it's because i did not finish it <laughs> okay, so you know, so. Uh, yeah 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 so now if you check you see for type of set what do you see the return here you see they did not return set yeah i'll check now the same thing if we have something like array right and we have new array because we also create an array this way i will now check for type of that array you see what it will return you see it's still returning objects for us and then if we, if we still come back and then say map and then we create a map new map right and then here we check type of map what will you see you see it will still say object so that's why we can't really use type of so thank god for javascript javascript has a special uh this thing function in which you can use to check whether it's an array or not and what is that function you use array dot is array now of course because of map here is not an array you see it's returning force now if we change this one if we change it to set you see that it will still return force because of course set two is not an array but immediately is an array we are creating by the time we do this you see what will happen you see it's returning true so that's why in this case we are not actually using type of we are using this and why i'm using this exclamation mark here is due to the fact that instead of we instead of we actually saying 
is not equal to r uh, is not uh, equal to uh, or is equal to false or is not equal to true is putting this one now is more like saying okay well, in case this one is not true then what should we do according to them that we should return an empty array which is this now let's go back and check now what is now even the main thing this one is just to check whether if it's an array or not uh -huh, right which we have handled now let's now check this function is taking one argument which is an array of objects and this array is the same format as this from the previous task okay say create a function this that returns an array of ids from a list object and then answer we should use the map function now this is the array we are expecting isn't it now since they say we should return the 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 what did they even call it the the an array of id isn't it so let me ask a question how are we going to achieve that using the map method i think um, i can i can take in okay do you hear me yes i can hear you yeah so i think we we are going to use the return and then array dot, okay. array dot map okay return okay array dot map dot map yes and then open bracket and close okay and then i can i can give it okay i need an alphabet a okay and then enter the bracket you have something like this yeah and then a dot id okay okay all right so now you know we have not called the function so now here let's now call the function for this this is the first one and then this is the next one so now you can see we got the answer now what is happening here I think I've explained about this array method before, right? But I'll still come again for the sake of probably those that uh, are just maybe joining today or don't have a clear understanding of a map method, right? Just like I've been explaining, I say when you have what they call method, it simply it works on a particular thing. So array method works on an array, set method works on a set, uh, map method works on map so if you observe when i was doing that set there's something i did i did set dot add why because add is a method belonging to set but array doesn't have any method called add so if i mistakenly say array dot add nothing is going to happen because add is not a method of array so now your map method what it does is that it takes an existing array because it works on an array let's say we have an array of maybe um let's say uh, alx right let's say pld and then let's say um afr that's africa right and then we want to add to each of these names now in our array we now want to add dash software engineering that's dash se to it now what are we going to do that is where your map method comes in. What is your map method doing? It will come. Immediately you say dot map. The next thing you need to do is to open this bracket. Then the ne next thing to do again is to open another bracket inside of the map. Now you are now going to take a variable. This variable can be anything. It can be x, it can be y, it can be z, but minus number. It can be any variable. Right? If you like here, yeah, you can put it LM to show that element if you like. Now, what will this variable do? This is what it will do. 
when you call dot map on this array this is what is going to happen it will first come for the first element inside your array it will pick it up and then what is going to do it will now set this e that we put here it will now set the e to be called to the first element what is the first element here alx now the next thing it will look out for it will look out for a function that will now work on this first element so that is where your anonymous function comes in you guys remember yesterday when we talk about arrow function being the anonymous function now what do we want the function now what do we want the function to do on this first element of our array okay what we want it to do here is to add to it s dash s e that's dash software engineering then we can now say e plus you know concatenation we can use plus to concatenate plus inside bracket inside uh, our quotation dash s e right now this is what is going to do this map we take the first element here alx e now we become alx it will now look for the function that it needs to work on alx what is the function now this function we are trying to say take the element which is present now the map is presently on and add to it concatenate to it dash se so the response we are expecting here will now be alx dash se so in this case now this value alx will now be it will now be um, replaced with alx dash se but not replaced in this original array the map method will create another new array with something like this so this is for the first element it will now go back again to the second element what is the second element this time around this e the second element this e will be equal to the second element which in this case is what pld now it will now check which function do we have and what is the function saying about this element pld the function is saying add to pld dash se it will now come here and say pld dash se and then it will now come back and add to the array that's created already with the new value which is pld dash se and then it's going to do for the third one again and then next what we are going to have is uh, afr dash se so now you see what we have here if we are to return this if we say return now look at what we are going to have and uh, what is this error this thing is showing us okay sorry we cannot return after outside the function <laughs> <laughs> sorry we cannot return outside uh, outside the function so now let's say i'm going to give this a value const i'll give it a value of new array equal to right and then i'm going to call the new array now what do you see you can see that we now have new values and what are the new values in place of alx we now have alx dash se in place of pld we now have pld dash se and in place of afr we now have afr dash se so so that is what is actually happening here now remember what we have here is an array of an object so it means that by the time this one start working it will come to the array it will check for the first element what is our first element these are first element this object here and then it will now check this object is now our first element so how do we assess id from this first object obviously it's going to be the name of the object dot the id so that by that we have assessed this one remember map create a new array then it will create a new array and put one there then it will go again what is the second the next array element is another object and then of course we want it to return the object dot id so it will return the id of the object which in this case the next one is two so it will come back and add two to the array then is there any element yes there's another element of the array which is what the third object so it will now check okay the third object now what do we want we want it to return the third object dot id that's idea of the third object and which of course here is what three it will now come here and add three so that is how this your map method works
your array uh, map method these are it works so it's easier than for you to be using for loop because another way to do this is that you can actually use your for loop uh -huh. for maybe for const uh, element of array then inside you now start asking it okay dot this dot id and all that so which of course it will still work uh -huh. but i think this one is way 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 easier so just see just one line of code and we have gotten what we want uh -huh. so that's it so i don't know is there any question okay so it seems that's a no so i think we can go on so let's continue yeah yeah uh can i say something okay please go on yes you can i, I understand it sure you know i i told you that day of the project yes yes through the resources i thought maybe we were to create like um a new map and okay. start adding this stuff inside okay. that's how i was having a dick that day yeah no 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 so no, not from the resources no. you read them um, like you declare a variable then you do new map yes stuff like that yes yeah just like if you want to create a new set, set. or a new array yes yes so that was what i was doing and i was yeah well I later told you that I found a way about it. Yes. Understand it. Yes, you told me. You told me. That's true. That's true. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's good. So uh, now let's look at this. It says create a function. And one thing I want to say, right, is don't beat yourself too much. You understand? Now, for the fact that you don't understand fully what some of these things we are doing are. You have not figured it out fully does not mean you should feel discouraged and see yourself less as a programmer than your fellow person there are things that ordinarily it takes time javascript obviously this is not my first time of doing javascript let me tell you the truth when i started learning programming proper that's august 2022 i started with javascript so even i when i was reading all these things then some of some like the, the thing was not even making sense but anyways i still continued so it's now that we now started ALX, JavaScript, that I'm now getting to understand them much more better. You understand? So there are some things that you meeting them the first time, it might not ring a bell as much as you would want it to do. So sometimes until when you meet it the second time, third time, fourth time, and then boom, before you know, you now say, ah, so this is what this one is all about since. So that's just how some of these things are. So. So just your own is just to keep on learning, keep on practicing, and before you know it, you keep on getting better. So it's not actually uh, magic or rocket science, all right? So let's look at this one. It says create a function, this, that returns an array of objects who are located in a specific city. It should accept a list of students from get list students and a city string as parameters. You must use the filter function on the array so this is what is trying to say here that now if you check the what we have here you find out that each of the students are coming from a particular location and each of these locations are actually names of cities san francisco is a city colombia is a city so it's now saying that the function we should create now should be another function and what that function should do is that it should take in city as a string and then get list student as a list you remember our get list student that's this function so it means we are expecting this list of arrays and at the same time we are expecting also um city name of a particular city and what should we do it should go check for those students that are within that city and return only an array of those so how do we go about this of course first of all we need to declare our function so we have function and the name of function now what is this function uh, taking in it's taking an array and then it's taking a city right now did they ask us to do anything as you can see here they did not say we should check whether the array is empty or not uh, they just say function is that returns an array of objects who are located in a specific city it should accept a list of students from get list student and a city string as parameter 
you must use the filter function on array so now how are we going to do this is very easy they have even helped us here they say we should use the filter function uh, array or array method filter array method so now how can we use this of course we we'll return array because is an array method so we need to call it on the array we'll be receiving from as a parameter so we have array dot now filter so now i want to ask a question what does a filter property we know that okay a map property it goes one after the other into the this thing and then expect a function that we run on each of those array elements so what does the filter method does exactly let me ask what does it do like what is it sorry what's your question there was a breakage there oh, okay okay sorry so this is my question we all know what yeah. map method is doing right it will go inside the array and take each of the element of the array and apply the function on them so now what is a filter method doing what is the function of a filter method on array and how is it implemented because for map now map takes a parameter which will represent each of the element of the array and then we return this of the array so like how does how can we apply this filter method to the array uh basically from the name and um, yes. filter is just like to get a specific um element or value value good 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 so so now what it simply means is that we are going through each of the element of array i know each of the element of the array is actually an object and then we are checking whether it's actually a particular city we are looking for whether is the one now there is a little similarity between filter sorry i said similarity there's a little differences between filter and find so who can tell me what is the difference between filter and find because we we'll still i think we we'll still get to a place where we we'll have to use the find method so what do we think is the differences between filter and find Or should we leave it when we get there? Okay, let's leave it when we get there. Then we'll not analyze the two. So now filter, of course, just like our map, is going to take in a parameter. So we can use E, right? And then what are we expecting? We are expecting to look for what? The part of the array that is the location. It should only return it when is equal to the city. So we now have the function okay what are you returning return when e dot location because each of this e will be an object because uh, we have array of objects so each of the array element is an object and then in the object we have three things which is what which is the name the id the first name and the location so now our interest is the location if the location of the object is actually equal to the city they are giving us then it should return that particular list of array so that is what this one is actually doing so now how do we get uh, to run this function of course this is the example they gave so we'll copy this two as it is like this and then paste it here to test so what do we have i think we're having issues cannot read properties of undefined reading filter hmm is this the way to implement filter uh -huh. this is array dot filter yes e uh -huh. e dot I... okay okay i'm listening please go on it looks as if the implementation is wrong i know uh, uh, uh i was thinking you you made a mistake but <coughs> go on. Japanese take it. Okay. So was there any mistake? Was there any error? Uh are you oh, um oh type error cannot read properties. Mm. Or should we check uh, let's check java.info. Let's be sure of the filter syntax. Uh, maybe check the 
I, I think the um, um, creation, I mean, as the definition object stop up. Yes, let's let's check it up and see. So let me let me search for the array. So by now, okay, filter supposed to take this and then return this. Well, let's check it and see. Ah, why is this thing slow like this? God, basics data type. Okay, hey, look at itself here. Okay, good array methods. Uh -huh. So we go straight to slice concat for each. Uh, find last no filter. Good, good, good. So according to them here, right? You have filter. Then you have yes item. Isn't it the name of the filter? Uh, the name of the array, sorry, dot filter. Then item, item dot id is less than three. So what is now happening? I Fil think those one is if you are assigning it to a variable. Okay. Like the example there. Okay. And but I think that's all we did. We just returned it directly here too. If you look at it. Right. Or, or should we assign to a variable first before returning and see? No, no. It, it should work like this. This. Let, let's just check our functions or okay. stuff. Okay. Sure. So we have this. I think this one is in order. Get to the list. Then we have this. Get student list IDs. Okay. What we need is just get student list, right? get student okay get list student mm -hmm. or should i say get list student uh -huh, which is what this. if you what if you comment out this and um, get student okay this um, one yeah okay let me do that function mm -hmm. get list student array city return array dot filter which is this dot filter e or is it the e that is let me try a and see <laughs> <laughs> crazy uh, it's t okay let's switch it let's see i think it's it, it, okay it wait 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 okay um, uh, oh, oh, right. i think it is looking for location and then it didn't found it on the okay but look at the it. data too okay oh, no. but we have location here now we okay let's to. even check right let me say uh okay get list this one will return all all of them so let me say get list at zero and see oh is there an issue here type error cannot read properties of undefined Wait, oh. let me see. Uh -huh. So, if you can assess this one, if you say dot location, uh -huh, we have San, San Francisco, right? So, obviously, why is he not working? Function get list students, array, and city. Then, this already, this one, we have it already which is this function is available so return array dot filter f i l t a uh, wait okay sorry okay um this um function um call oh yes this gets student by location at the bottom yes uh, have you um defines the That's this that's one. Right? Get, get list student now. Okay, yes. Yes, look at it. You know what they did is they assigned get list student, the function called yeah. student. Then here, they now passed in the name of the student to this function. Okay, ah, you are right. That's what I'm saying. Right. Like, we've not like defined the function. You are right. You are right. You are right. You are right. Can you imagine? Hey, God. <laughs> Cool. <laughs> That's how it is. You are right. 
You are right. So, so I think this is it. So what we are after is actually those students that their location is in this city. And here, the city given here or passed into the function is San Francisco. So you can see that the name of the student we have here are just the ones from San Francisco. So we have San Francisco and we also have San Francisco. So that is that is it. Kai, thank you so much. Imagine. <laughs> hey, God. Function name. So that, that is the filter method. So if you check, you now find out that there's a similarity between almost all our array methods, which is what? It takes in a variable here or an argument here, which is what? The individual element of the array. And then whatsoever thing is returning here is what you want it to return. So that is that. Is that. Then let's look at uh, 3. Now what does 3 says? 3 says reduce. Now, if you are talking of the reduce array method, reduce array method is something that can combine everything. Let's say maybe we we'll combine each element of the array into one. So what is used mainly is for calculations, right? Maybe you have an array of numbers. So permit me to, to give an example of that. Maybe we have const num, and then we have like maybe something like uh, one, two five seven isn't it and then want to add all these element of arrays together we can just come and say const sum sum of the number equal to and then we'll call the array num dot then we'll call our reduce method now unlike the other array method reduce method is quite special and why is it quite special not that it's more than it's better than all of them but it's quite special in that it takes in two parameters on a basic basic level what are those two parameters it takes in some me i'm just going to name it some and because based on the the distinct documentation if, if you if you read it uh if you get to read it reduce i hope it's somewhere here reverse no not what i needed so i just needed you to see the two parameters they mostly make use of okay and this is the summary so i think we should see it somewhere here uh, uh, this thing don't want to show so okay good fine mm, no 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 reduce where are you i think it take the the I, current value and ah, then these people okay good good so it is the current version accumulate good so now it now takes the current value right now there's something they used to advise and what do they used to advise? They used to advise that you should always give it a beginning value. That's a beginning value of zero. Now what is happening? It will take in the sum and then the current value. Now the sum is the present num uh, total, right? And then the current is the present element is being on. So let's say now, by the time you start it here in this function, it's good you put sum as zero. Now, by the time you put sum as zero now, it's going to take sum as zero and then current as zero. Now, the next thing, what will happen? It will take the current as two, as one, sorry. Remember, sum is T zero. Now, it's now going to do one plus. That's depending on the function you are giving it. So here, let's see, because of what they ask us to do here, if you check the, this thing, they say, it should accept a list of students from this as a parameter. You must use reduce function the array. Here they say we should sum all student ID. So if we are summing all this number now, what we are going to have is the sum plus the current. And then just like I say, it's good to pass in the initial value to be zero. So our initial value now sum is zero. By the time we start moving now, sum is zero. By the time we come again, sum will be a zero initial. Why? Current now, we have one. Now, by the time we now come here, it will now be current, which is zero, plus uh, the sum, which is zero, plus the current, which is one. So, zero plus one, we now have one. Now, that one will now become the sum. And then our current will move to the next element, which is two. So, now, by the time we come to this function, it's now saying sum plus current. Now, the sum was one. So, we now have one plus. Now, the current is two. So 1 plus 2 will have 3. It will now take it and store it inside the sum. And 
mind you you must not necessarily name it sum and current you can name it anything but just know that this one is the value it keeps total record of why this one is the present value is iterating through so now we now have three so the next one now the current will move to five and then coming here it now see that is sum plus current now sum is already three it will now be three plus what is the current the current is five three plus five it will have eight that eight it will now take it and save it inside sum again and then coming back the next current value now will be seven so coming here now it will now check what is the sum the sum is now five plus two plus one which is what eight so it will now take it eight plus what is the current number seven eight plus seven it will give us 15. so it will now save it inside this sum 15. it will now check is there another um, element in the array no no element so it will now return back what the present value of sum is which in this case is 15. so now if we do this by the time we call the function sum norm so let's see what we have you see that we now have the value of 15. so that is how your reduce function actually works uh, i say function sorry <laughs> reduce array method yes so actually that's how it actually works so now if we are to apply it here in this our code right they say we should use the function get student id so our function get student id now let's check is it taking any parameter yes they say it should accept a list of student from get list student so it should be an array of object right already we have it here get list student this is it this one in this case we don't need it so we we'll just take it out that's get student by location we we'll just take it out and then so here we can say it's taking in an array actually then what should he do here he say that returns the sum of all the students id so it should return for us array dot reduce so reduce what are we taking remember we are taking two things sum and then and just like i i tell you you can use any variable it mustn't be sum and present in fact you can use c and s s to show sum c to show current now what should he do it should always return the sum of the sum and the current and then it should have an initial value of zero i told you based programming wise is is wise to always give it an initial value of zero and your initial value comes after the function because this is actually the function this is the parameter so it should come after the function which is here zero right now since we are here the next thing is to call our function so we'll copy what they have here and then we'll paste it here so let's see what do we have uh, this one that is telling us undefined hope oh, it's not something that i've gone and do again array dot reduce okay you see what hey god 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 what is wrong with me hey father now each of these one because this is the current value right i you know is actually array of objects so now what we are assessing this one is actually the object and they say the id so we have dot id right so what do we have ah uh -uh. oh, wow what is happening hmm. what is happening what is happening what is happening what is happening array mm -hmm. array dot reduce s c uh -huh. oh. um the get this student hope yes. you didn't comment it out okay you know this is it get list student i, I think you should cancel the log the, the value okay okay that's true so um if that's the case that means instead of returning here isn't it let me store it into an array let's say a is equal to and then let me console.log a here oh like you don't get him and um, the line 38 okay okay okay, okay you know okay. you assigned gets um stuff so you have to console.log okay 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 i, I okay i get it that <laughs> sorry all right so uh so we are console dot log value right 
Yeah. We are having undefined. Still undefined. Mm. Something, is, on... something is wrong somewhere. Mm. Something is wrong somewhere. I don't think it's this S dot ID. I doubt. Mm, I doubt. It's not S dot ID. Call S now. You know, since you did um const a. Yes. Uh. Okay. I think you should you should bring it back to return then. Okay. Okay. Hey. Okay. Okay. Okay value okay good so you are right actually you are right we're just that we are still not having the correct number we are having six here and we are expecting to have one plus two okay it's correct actually one plus two is three three plus three is six so we are correct we are correct it's just i'm thinking where is this where do this year eight come from for god's sake Top. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you know they, they have having eight here. <laughs> so I'm thinking that where do the eight come from? Okay, you know maybe they. It might be they added something extra. I you know at times. Yes. Yes. Um, what they are testing with. Yes, because based on the information we have here, we have idea of one here. So if we add it to this, is it to make it three? If we add three plus three to make it six, so obviously we are getting the right answer here, which is six. Uh, so so this like so i hope like uh everybody understands this reduce method now what it uh is. not really because uh, you were breaking at the time so okay well i i get the idea uh this is my this is my network okay uh, sorry you will we'll be patient with me today <laughs> all right so so always remember your reduce will take in two parameters the sum the current and then you should always initialize it with zero and that should come immediately after your function that's anything you want it to do if you like you can actually subtract here so it all depends on what they want you to do but just know that reduce will return a single value unlike filter and map that we will return the whole array with new set of values your reduce will return just a single value and that's why it needs two value which is one it keeps track of where it is the position and the other it keep track uh, track of the overall value so always take note of that right yes so um okay so that's reduce so or should i come again like the explanation it's clear oh okay all right so that's reduce now uh, let's look at the next one we have here so they say create a function update student grade by city that returns an array of students for a specific city with their new grade it should accept a list of students from get list students a city string and new grades that's array of grades object as parameters New grades is an array of objects with this format. If a student doesn't have grade in new grades, the final grade should be n slash a. You must use filter and map combined. So you see here now they are telling us that we should combine both filter and map to achieve this. So the overall thing they are saying here is that already we have this which is get list student, which is this list we are having here. But now what they are now asking us to do is that provided we are having a particular student ID and the grade. Now we should check the student ID against ID. And if they match, we should now update or add the property to that particular object having that ID. We should add the property of grade given to it. And in a situation where there is no new grade, or the grade is the same uh, right okay let me see what do they see here you should accept a list of students from get list students a city string and new grade array of grades object as parameter new grades is an array of objects with this format so 
Now, they say if a student doesn't have grade in new grades, there's a situation where a student ID is actually uh, indicated, but it doesn't have a grade, right? Then the final grade should be N slash A. And they ask us to use filter and then map method combined. We need filter, we need map. So we'll ask ourselves, what is filter used for? And what is map used for? Of course, we have two scenarios here. What are the two scenarios? Number one, we need to filter out based on location. Then after we must have filtered it out based on location, next, we will now compare the ID of the student and the normal ID of our list of objects of students. And if it matches, then of course, we do the needful. And what is the needful? We add the property of grade to our existing uh, object. If a game is not, there's no new grade or there's no grade indicated, that means we'll give it a value of N A. Right? So, of course, obviously, the first thing we need to apply is the what? The filter to find based on location. And after finding based on location, then the next thing is to do what? Is to now check and see if we can actually update the, the student, if there's the student ID, if it's present, and then upgrade the, the, add the grade of that particular student ID. To our existing array of objects so so now let's see so first of all we have to return because that's what they say we should do if i'm not mistaken they say returns an array of objects so we first return and then what are we returning we are returning get okay this one permit me let me just use array uh, this name is too long array so now we we'll return array dot of course first of all we need to use the filter now how do we use the filter we can say for each of the information or each of the data or anything you want to use me i'll use e uh, each of the elements which each element is an object isn't it what are, what do i need i need that it should return it in a situation where if the element the location of the element matches the city that is being given to us and then dot filter mm, we have done filter already right then next dot map now this one to make it look uh, better right this dot filter we can bring it down here so we can bring it down here so that we have return array dot this one we act on it so of course we know what is will happen here it will go over these ones and check for the location if the location matches with the city then it's going to give us an array of that then next what do we want to check we now want to check over the result of this now we are not sure that okay all the array present now will be the array based on this city that is being given to us or that is being asked of us then next what do we do we map it that each element of that new array we got now based off of on this city right what should we do in that case which function should be carried out now if you ask me i'll say we still need to do a lot of things here and why do I say we need to do a lot of things? Now, after getting the uh, uh, array of information or array of objects that matches this city, the next thing we need to do is to compare the ID of the array. Now, for the array, they use ID. But for this one here, for the object of the array, they use ID. But for this one here, what they are using here is actually student ID. So, how can we actually implement that here? Let me ask a question. How can we implement that? How can it be implemented? Because if you see like here now, for instance here, they did not just give us one particular object. They gave us an array of objects. You can see the object here, two, two, this one and this one. So how can we achieve that?
What do you guys think we can do? Mm -hmm. I think we we should compare the the student ID and the actual ID. Okay. If they the image. Okay. And then if the image we are going to check for for the for the new trait. Okay. If the new trait is available. Okay. So Yeah, I think Okay. So of course now why I'm opening this as a block of code is because unlike these other ones that we have been solving, we just need to return just a single thing. But this one, if it's actually after the fil after filtering it on that map, we need to run some series of code. So that's why we have to open this block, like this block of code. So here now, we can now say, okay, now, according to what engineer say, he say we will check if what. Please, can you come again? If if should an ID is equal to ID okay good so we don't check if our now if you remember wait, wait okay yes i'm listening yeah can contain okay uh, oh, oh on my opinion i will just say e dot student id okay it's equal to it yeah okay e dot student id id like this yeah, it's equal to AT. Is equal to? It's equal to AT. Okay. I don't know if I'm right or wrong. Okay. Or, or if it must be equal to E dot AT. Okay. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> no, we are all trying. So, so actually, yeah. yes, we are all trying, right? So in a situation uh, where we are having something like this, right? One of the best way to clear yourself is to console.log and check, right? So now let's even check. Hmm? What is this E we are receiving from this map? So we can decide to say console.log E. Let's even see all the elements of the array we are getting and then let's pick all these ones here because those are our test cases so let's pick them and print now if you check okay i'm going to put off this one this first one so that it will not uh, get us confused i'll just use this i'll remove this console lock too because in this code editor is redundant so now what are we getting you can see that due to the filter method you can see that here they entered list of objects here they enter location of San, San Francisco. That's why everything that we have here, all of them, the location is actually San Francisco. You can see location of San Francisco, location of San Francisco. Because why? The filter has already done its work here. So after filter has done its work, it's now passed the result of the work, which is this, to this map. Now, for each of the element of the uh, array, look at it. This is the first one, and this is the second one. Now, what are we looking to compare? We are looking to compare what? This ID with what? The student ID. What will be supplied to us here? The student ID here. Now, for this one, you can see that the student ID is not just a single object, but it's also an array of objects. Do we get it? So, if we are to now get the student ID of our original array, it's going to be e.id, of course. So, if we do e.id, you see that what we have is the normal ID, which is 1 and 3. Now, of course, we need to compare it with this. But the question now is, this is not just an object. If it's a single object, it will be easier. This is an array of objects. So, it means we have to iterate through this array of objects and assess the individual element in which the individual elements too are arrays. So how do we go about that? OK. 
can you repeat that again okay let me come again you know what we have here yes, my battery is low i will get the record in later all right all right no problem no problem <laughs> so thank you for joining okay now already what we are getting here get list of students right this is it and this is an array of objects right let me reduce the font so i just hope it will still be clear ah to not be too clear okay let me increase this one this is an array of objects right this is an array and then these are objects the first object second object the third object inside of the array so which is this one what we just filtered now now this new grade 2 is coming in form of object but unfortunately checking what we have here what is being passed into our function because this is our function of this student grade by city this is it of this student grade by city and it's taking three parameters array city and new grade now the array they passed in the array from get list students and what is the array from get list students this is the array from get list students containing three objects and then next they pass in the city san francisco and then next they pass in the new grade now the new grade they pass in if you look at it's not just an object but it's an array of objects look at it are you seeing it it's not just an object but an array of objects so it means that if we want to check for the id of this our original array compared to the id of this student id of this our new grid it means we have to look for a way to iterate over this array of objects also you know this one by using um, filter and map we are also iterating through this original array here now for new grade 2 this is not just an object but an array of objects for instance this one is having two objects this object one and this object two so it means before we can even compare it we need to also look for a way to go over each of the objects in this array two so how do we go about that okay so we we should not use filter again or no by using filter right we are correct by using map also we are correct are you getting it but then yeah. we need yeah okay okay you want, you want, you want yeah, to say so, something so i was going to say if if we are using filter again and then just try to to found that each each student have a a new trade and um or or i am wrong with that beautiful i love that contribution so obviously this is what we need to do what do we need to do already filter map is taking care of this our original area now inside of map where do we need new grade it's inside of map we need new grade and we need to iterate through new grade now how can we iterate through new grade very easy how we can use our for loop const right let's say const grade of new grades right so here we now say return is it return we are saying hmm? we we now check I think we if right I, yeah okay. I I think here on the on the trade you have to say student ID that you that, that you have put at the first time good doing so, the, the the find method define method so if we say yeah. if right just like what you said you say if grade isn't it dot student id is equal to yeah. e dot what id right ID. now what mm -hmm. should we do here let's console dot log console dot log now this time around let's console dot log grade right dot yeah. grade and see so and look at it we got what 36 yeah. 36 isn't it 
<laughs> the first time, what did we get? And the first, and the first time, you know, the first time, you know, we did not check for this. We just went ahead and console dot log the grade. Oh yeah. You understand? So we are now having repeated values, which is ninety seven eighty six. 9786 so that's why we're not thinking it will not work so i was thinking find we do it in such a way it will check just once but unfortunately i never knew that even find has the issues that uh four have it's just that we need to use the if statement to now solve that issue so now here, yeah. if you look at it five of course in this one we don't have anyone with id5 so that's why this one was not picked but when we now checked for the next one of course this one we have an id of what one and that's why he this one was now picked and what is the grade of that one with id of one is 86. yeah you understand in fact we can even go ahead and check grade uh, dot grade we can also try to assess e dot maybe uh the easy first name they used yes first name so you can see 86 and Gualome, that's the first name. Of course, the one having ID one, the first name is Gualome. So, and we can still decide to check the ID. So we can say uh, E dot ID. So you can see that the ID is one. It's the same thing with the ID of this grade. Now we can decide to say grade dot ID. Okay, sorry, it's not ID that they use. It's student ID. Student ID. So you can see, student ID is one, our normal ID is also one. So that's why this one is actually matching. So according to the code, so I don't know, hope we understand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I understand. Okay. Um, this stuff is... It's, it gets the <laughs> Yeah, because I was even distracted, but I'll take my time to... Oh, okay, <laughs> okay, okay. So, so no problem. So it means that in this case now, of course, we'll come back. Let's come back to this and see what they are asking us to do. So according to them, they say we should upload. If the student ID matches the ID, we should now up, uh, add the grade, isn't it? And we know it's, it's almost easier to do that. So how are we going to do that? We'll say the original one. Now, what is the original one? The original one is E right we cannot say e dot grade is equal to what is going to be equal to grade dot grade right so now if we now come back here where is it self e dot grade this e now is the individual object so that particular object now that we have which is this one that of gualome dot grade it should be equal to grade dot grade that's the grade of this one which is what we you instead of grade yourself let's use g so that will not be confusing let's just use g uh -huh. so that we know that so this one now it to be g dot student and this one it to be g dot student id and this will be g dot grade yes so this one to have g dot grade right so e dot grade equal to g dot grade so that is when they are equal so let's check what of when they are not equal now according to alex it says if a student doesn't have a grade a new grade the final grade should be n over a so this one we check for when there is a grade then we should have our else statement, which we check for when there's no grade. Now, when there's no grade, what should happen? E dot grade, according to them, that they say should be what? N slash A. Right? And then here, what are we having here? This one is still showing undefined, undefined. Ah, why is it showing undefined, undefined? It's not supposed to show undefined, undefined. Now. Well, are we getting anything wrong here? I don't think we are getting anything wrong here. Okay. We don't need this one too. Uh, 
so what is happening so any idea of what is happening okay 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 uh so here let's see hmm Okay, under this four, right? If else, this is the covering of if, this is the covering of s, and this is the covering of four. So I'm thinking that um before or immediately after our four, we should return whatsoever thing that is here that have happened yeah. inside here, right? Yeah. I think it should be returned, and because automatically I don't think it can all these ones can actually pick it. So I think it should be returned here. So if we are returning it, that means the return now value should be outside of our loop. So this is the closure of else. That means the next closure, because this is the closure of if. This is the closure of else. So the next closure should be that of for, which is this one. This one. So in that case, after that, we can now say return. Now the main thing we are returning should be what? Right. Now remember, yeah. this is what we are updating. We are updating the E, the object E. We are updating it with the grade. So what we should return is that object we are updating, which is E. Right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Because that's what we are actually updating inside of this for loop. So now, once we return E now, you will now find out that now we are now having, when you now do this, this is what we are having for the gualome that it matches both the id of the original one and the student id is matching one the grade is now giving us 86. why for this one that is no there's no match for it because the other one inside of here is actually five and we don't have uh id up to five so for the next one in the lo location of san francisco we just have grade to be na so if also remove this one if we uncomment this one now Right, let me remove this console up because it's redundant. So, if we do that now, you can see that this one, both of them are having NA, NA because here they gave a location of uh, where is it? Uh, student, they gave it just student ID of five, and of course, there is none from this location that has an ID of five. You look at it, the highest ID is three. So, for ID of five, of course, there's no record here that matches that. So, all of them will just be great N over A and grid n over a so i don't know <laughs> is there any question right? uh, i know there's plenty questions <laughs> so you you, you you didn't trust your for us to so no you know these things are not easy okay imagine what even takes you taking the class to figure out it to figure it out then imagine what it will not yeah. take a uh hair -huh. so that's why I say it's yeah. not actually, but uh, at Just least, confusing. yeah, but, uh, but at least we're able to walk through the process. Yeah. Yes. So that's why I used to advise that if possible, at every point in your code that you are not sure, always console.log. When you console.log, it gives you, you, you see what is going on at that particular point. And as a result of that, you can actually take better decision to know how to further tailor your program to meet uh, the requirement okay yeah. yes so I, I i think we have spent two hours already so <laughs> probably we'll call it a day 